His animal instinct can't be contained. Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to day 25 here on the 31 Days of Horror. I am your host, Mood616, and thank you once again for stopping in, guys. Yeah, day 25 is here, and we finally made it into the 1930s, and I've got one here from 1932. Again, from uh, 20th Century Fox. And once again, I'm really surprised at how good the picture quality is on this. Really, really amazing stuff. Um, yeah, for 1932, this one is called Dr. Renault's Secret. Uh, yeah, this one right here is basically deals with the Dr. Moreau type themes, uh, the island, you know, the Island of Lost Souls type thing. Um, so right there, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into if you already know that. Um, but yeah, get into the uh, the premise of this one. Um, it basically follows your uh, your main character, Dr. Forbes. He's an American scientist who has made his way all the way to France to marry uh, Dr. Renault's niece. Um, of course, Dr. Renault is also a scientist, and um, yeah. So upon his his arrival, uh, he um, a, a murder happens, and now this murder may have been directed towards him. So of course, you know, Dr. Forbes is not hurt or anything. I uh, becomes a little bit suspicious of that. He seems like that's pretty weird. Um, and then, uh, you know, he starts to do a little bit of investigating. Um, and then a couple more murders and a, a few more random things happen around the hotel where he's staying at. So, of course, he starts doing some more, you know, digging and stuff. Uh, he seems to have this weird feeling about Dr. Renault's assistant. Now, his assistant is very peculiar. He's very odd and he just seems off. You know, there's something about him that doesn't seem right. And like I said, all these weird things start happening and stuff. So now it's up to him to figure out what is actually going on in this place. And yeah, so that's basically the premise of your film right there. Now my thoughts on this one. Uh, the very first thing I noticed, you know, because this movie is, you know, about an American who's in France marrying another American and stuff. Um, I, it's very odd because this one doesn't really have a lot of French accents and things going on or European accents in general. There's a little bit that come and go in this film, but it's kind of off-putting. Now, I'm a big fan of like settings and atmospheric films and stuff like that, and the setting in this one is a little off because, like I said, the people just aren't, they're not recognizable to that area. It seems like there's more American actors and, and just more American people and things that are going on than that French feel. So that was kind of weird at first. I'm like, okay, maybe they're, he's staying in like a hotel that, you know, just, you know, just caters to Americans and stuff. But then as the film progresses, some of the accents kind of come and go, these French accents and these kind of European accents and stuff. So I thought that was really strange. Um, with that said, you know, the overall acting in the film is really good. I have to say, man, everyone did a really good job. Uh, J. Carroll Na uh, Nash, I know him from a film called uh, Dracula vs. Frankenstein, or Frankenstein vs. Dracula, that came out in like 1971. It's a really, really terrible film, but I remember him from that film. Of course, this one's, you know, 30 years prior, but, and he plays the, uh, the weird assistant in this one. Um, but yeah, the acting's really good. I really like his character, actually, because he's just, he kind of downplays it so much, and he's just, like, very slow and melodic uh, on his delivery of lines and stuff, which is really interesting. Um, you know, John Shepard plays the lead in this, and he does a really fantastic job, just very astounded by the acting in this one. The pacing in this film is fantastic. Now, this is a really, really short film. It only runs an hour long, but the pacing is great. It gets right into it, and there's just nonstop. Everything that's going on in the film is really relevant. They even managed to throw in a uh, kind of a subplot into the film with, you know, an ex-con that, you know, Dr. Rinaldi thought that he cured these ex-cons with, uh, you know, some therapy and stuff, and it proves to be, well, he didn't actually cure this guy very, very much and stuff, because, you know, becomes, you know, another plot line in the film. Um, and I really kind of like that subplot too, and it worked for the film and, you know, the overall outcome and what the third act is all about in the film. So really fantastic. Um, this one really doesn't really have a lot of atmosphere to the film. It has, the setting itself looks fantastic. I love the hotel. It's just old and wicked looking. Um, but it's just, it's off-putting because it's supposed to be in France, like I said, and it's very strange. But, you know, the music in the film, very typical, type 50s, a lot of strings, uh, just kind of powerful and stuff. And 
you know, it's a little forgettable because the music is very reminiscent of a lot of films from this era of filmmaking and stuff. Um, I, I did really enjoy this film. I thought it was really fantastic and it goes by super quick, of course, being an hour long. Um, and there's some really interesting references. I caught a, an Edgar Allan Poe reference to the Black Cat. They're referring to John Shepard or John Shepard's character, um, Dr. Forbes. He said something about a black cat and I was like, oh, I'm mean, pretty sure that is a, uh, that's an Edgar Allan Poe, um, you know, right there. But, uh, uh, an Edgar Allan Poe reference. But this one right here, it also deals with some kind of undertones in the film of like racism and things like that, that I might be reading too much into, but I'm pretty sure it's there. And I thought that was interesting to note because a film in 1942, I'm sure like a lot of these type of films didn't really deal with that stuff head on. And they kind of, you know, there is undertone to those elements in this film, which I thought was quite interesting. It's probably pretty easy to overlook and dismiss when you're watching the film, if you're just kind of taking it for what it is. But, you know, I thought that was really interesting too. But again, a super fun watch. PQ on this, fantastic. It looks great. You know, I just wish the setting had been more relevant to, you know, being in France, you know, just with the accents and stuff. I, I just kept laughing at the accents coming and going in the film. It was really off-putting me. I was just like, okay. And I really enjoyed the third act in this film, though. I thought the way the film progresses in the third act, and it makes sense. You know, it's a little predictable on what's going to happen and stuff, but it doesn't take away from the fun that you're that you're having in this film at all. Um, so, Doctor and Secret, another pretty good film here from uh, from 20th Century Fox. I'd always heard about this film because I really liked the Island Lost Souls story. You know, the Island Doctor Moreau. You know that. You know the the whole story of Doctor Moreau. I'm a big fan of that. I think that's really cool and stuff. So, but. Uh, Definitely give this one a shot. Um, again, this is from the box set that I pulled the other film out of from a couple days ago. So, give this one a shot, man. If you're into these old, old black and white films, give it a shot. Really good stuff. If I had to rate this one, I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. You know, it could have been a little bit longer. You know, I think they could have done a little bit more with it. Um, you know, but it is what it is. You know, like, it, it's, a, it's an early 40s film. The, you know, the kills and stuff are all off screen. Like, that's pretty much expected. Uh, there's one interesting death with a dog in this that I, I won't really give away I guess I kind of gives away but uh, I, I thought that was kind of interesting how they did it and stuff but yeah Dr. Renault's Secret give it a shot 7 out of 10 I really dug it I thought it was fun and yeah that's gonna do it for day 25 guys check you tomorrow on day 26 who knows what decade we're going to I don't know peace out homies